very good morning uh, thank you my respected chairpersons and uh, at the outset i would like to thank uh, afop ahmedabad for organizing meticulously this vaccine id con 2024 and once again i got the chance to come to this vibrant city of ahmedabad uh, so you change this give the presentation so in the uh, coming 40 minutes or so we will discuss uh, some of the very interesting cases of neonatal infections though we know uh, neonatal infection has the highest is the main cause of the neonatal mortality rate in across the world and especially in our developing countries and we don't have specific signs and symptoms which are uh, which will focus us to yes this is infections so neonates behave in a very stereotype way they have a very subtle and vague symptoms which may be due to hypothermia maybe due to hypoglycemia maybe due to congenital cardiac disease maybe due to inborn errors of metabolism so what is required is a very meticulous history taking and correct interpretation of lab results because examination doesn't reveal always so correct interpretation of lab results and of course that you will see in this case is a very critical observation of how the baby is reacting to the antimicrobial therapy is the key to success and to differentiate whether it is due to infection or it is something else it's not moving yeah okay now coming to the, all these cases we have gone uh, we have come across in the recent uh three to four months so now uh, without delay we go to the first case which is a male baby which was developed delivered late preterm around 36 weeks birth weight was 2.49 thank you uh the baby developed respiratory distress the antenatal history was uneventful there was no risk factor for sepsis antenatal usg was normal history of there was a history of second degree consanguinity present among the parents so this should uh, make you an alert baby was given moist oxygen through nasal cannula not maintaining and was referred to ich on examination we found gross tachypnea grunting subcostal retraction chest bilateral crepitations with a heart rate of 178 no murmur audible neurological examination was more or less normal and moving uh, so this is the initial investigation though we don't send usually on the day one of the cbc but uh, because this baby was a critical so we send on the day one which showed a count of total count of 15200 with a crp of 34 and normal being 1 and the blood gas of 7.28 with a pco2 of 61 and this was the x ray so uh, baby was not not so may i ask uh, uh, dr ashis uh, so what are we dealing with is it yeah if you sum up this is a clean delivery there is no respect for the sepsis baby came out and had oxygen requirement and if you look at the grunting oxygen requirement intercostal in drawing and in a full term baby if you put a down is scope this is must be more than 5 or 6 at least yes so this is the one which will require initial respiratory support that is for sure without oxygen it will not do coming to the what are dealing with there is some parenchymal problem of course the co2 is 67 but i don't know whether it's a arterial gas or the venous gas i am bound to get higher co2 on the venous gas but as long as ph is 7.2 i'm okay with that hmm. i'll ignore crp 36 at this stage is just delivered baby so i'll ignore that but having yes. said that blood culture has been taken baby will require some pairing some respiratory support to start with and hmm. we'll follow up how does baby behave so though there were no risk factors we could see some of the some haziness was developing in the right side so this is an early onset sepsis uh, on maybe some uh, type of uh, rds so may i uh, uh, no a neonate is usually when we think of sepsis we diagnose based on the sepsis screen but they have so many drawbacks like on the day one as sir said it may not be true reflection so are there any new biomarkers or tests which predict sepsis better with better accuracy uh, so dr manan will you like to take uh 
if, if we look at TRP and uh, its sensitivity is around 75 percent, specificity is around 50 55 percent. So compared to CRP and uh, available bedside in our practices, uh, one marker is procalcitonin, which is having uh, same sensitivity as CRP like around 75 80 percent, but specificity is 100 percent. So if uh, it is negative we definitely can rule out infection second uh, important thing with pct is that uh, is crp rises after 12 hours of infection reaches at 24 hour at peak while pct rises early within one two hour and reaches peak at six hour so if your baby is uh, clinically troubling you with P pct positive that means there is infection if your baby is clinically symptomatic and PCT is negative, yeah. so that means it, it initially at initial point of view rules out infection. Yeah, thank you. The point is very well taken though uh, we have, uh, but still PCT is a costlier test not available in every center. So I think we should, it should be, yes. Yeah. Basically the dilemma is proving the sepsis or ruling out the sepsis. Yeah. There are few tests which will rule out the sepsis, but that will not make me happy. Mm. I want to prove the sepsis at this stage mm. because when I talk about antibiotics on this thing, question to me would be whether I should start on antibiotic or not. Yes. And in my note, there is no single test which will prove test of uh, sepsis at word go means at the first hour of life or within six hours of the life. Yes, absolutely, sir. So, in uh, neonates doesn't give us time. So, whenever in doubt, we start antibiotic, we see uh, the blood cultures and if not then only we can so there is a often you will find uh, especially the youngsters they ask the role of early sepsis calculator so does it has any role in our country in india so early sepsis calculator is very commonly used in foreign countries yes. uh, there, it is a multivariate proglomeration uh, of many things so maternal temperature maternal high vaginal soap yes. prolonged rupture of membranes and prematurity and uh, all, all, all those stuff will help actually to decide whether we should start antibiotics or not. Two things, it will help early to start antibiotics plus it will also uh, ask us that not to start antibiotics if there is not a problem as well. Now the importance is that, that in foreign countries group B streptococcus GBS is highly prevalent and all the uh, mothers are screened at 32 to 36 with, with high vaginal swab. Mm. While what is happening in India is that we don't have a single uh, single organism which is causing the sepsis. Yes. So it is very difficult but still we, whichever babies comes to us we should use early uh, uh, calculator. Especially prolonged rupture of membranes, maternal temperature, choreomyelitis is there that will easily give. The only problem what happens in our setting is we don't know how much uh, vaginal examination multiple been yes. has been done so we don't get history but if we know that this is what the setup is there then we can early predict the sepsis in so uh, the main disadvantage to, uh, to use it in india is as he has said the gbs is not that common more ma only few studies are there and they have shown the incidence to be about four to five percent in contrast it is 25 to 30 percent in western literature and we don't have uh, this we have to have a meticulous follow-up for the case and of course uh, this is not very relevant but we can take histories like like corium nanitis and all those things i study like they have proved that by using the sepsis calculator you can decrease the use of antibiotic by half and culture by one so third. all this this new biomarkers this early sepsis calculator basically is to for using antibiotic uh, antimicrobial stewardship so that we can at least stop the antibiotic if, if these are negative for our country, Saurabh Datta has validated the score, yes. which has been religiously followed by PGI Chandigarh. Yes. And that score should be all right, doesn't prove the sepsis, but whether to start antibiotic or not, one yes. can decide based on that score. Uh, so, uh, now coming to this case, what antibiotic you will give to this baby? Uh, as looking uh, toward the history and clean delivery, right now, at present, I won't start antibiotic. Because though X-ray is showing some heaviness, maybe the transient acute of newborn may be their initial phase. So just I uh, observe the baby clinically, and uh, if required, we'll see uh, send septic screen again within 12 hours. But right now, looking to the history and uh, uh, this one, no uh, leaking, no any uh, mother maternal fever, 
So right now, I'll give you just respiratory support. Uh, so right. if it is an inborn patient, it's okay. But uh, another disadvantage of many of our NICUs in developments in India is we have outborn patients also. So that is against uh, again a disadvantage for using early sepsis calculator. We don't have a infection rate defined infection rate. So had it been an outborn patient coming and to depending with depending on the epidemiology and the flora of that uh, unit. I will prefer that. Is it possible to know the flora of every center from where the Generally, babies are uh, We are uh, for starting with aminoglycoside combination with uh, cephalosporin or uh, an, any beta lactam antibiotic. We are starting to cover majority of the organisms. Okay. I think, I think the baby is slightly sick. The blood gas also proves CRP is high. There is no harm in taking blood culture and starting the antibiotics. I think most important thing is the baby itself our our baby is the most important i, I will agree with doctor your baby basically here if you look the one who requires respiratory support yes it to be curtain and star and we can always we stop can early this can be ppn very severe ppn we can say that but we are seeing the case of gps that is mm -hmm. happening in india also unfortunately we are not documenting it it just be positive but it can tell you cover the thing Yes, so, uh, so, so I think so the conclusion from the panelist and also my opinion is when the baby is sick, it's better to start antibiotic and you can all send a blood culture, start antibiotic and you can always come down. So if you have a habit of starting antibiotic, you also should have a very good habit of stopping it and de-escalating it. I think this should be the message. Uh, Anyone yeah. wants to okay. so 48 hours if baby is in air now out of oxygen and blood yeah. culture is negative, we can stop it, but yeah. it's better Thank to start. Yes, and yes. Another thing in this case is that this was cesarean section taken at late preterm. So why was that taken? And we don't know that reason behind that maybe uh, Yes, there may be fetal tachycardia or something. Okay. So this was an outborn patient which was referred to us, and so we started antibiotic, sending a blood culture, and uh, now next uh, move to the Sorry. So baby was initially put on CPAP as the uh, score was respiratory distress score was high. First line antibiotic and IV fluid with 10 D started. But after 24 hours due to clinical deterioration and worsening, the baby was put on ventilator. And this is the x-ray. You know the, uh, the uh, haziness which was developing in the right side just taken a more, it has become more opaque. There is a homogeneous opacity in the right side. So so repeat blood count was done which shows 19,300 count with a neutrophil of 76, CRP has gone to 93. Now will you upgrade antibiotic or because you have already said the blood culture, what to do next? Anyone? If BAB is behaving well, not to change antibiotic, yes. just manage the ventilation, nutrition, routine things, hypoglycemias, asepsis precautions. But need not to change antibiotic at this stage. I understand you are talking about CRP increasing, mm -hmm. but CRP increase does not mean that you change antibiotics. Yes, yeah, so very clear hours. cut message you should not play with the antibiotic. Okay, sit tight, see how the baby is responding and coming to. Like if after this investigation has been taken after 48 hours, then definitely we will consider for yeah. upgrading the antibiotic. Yeah, okay. Because okay. platelets are going down, CRP is increasing. Okay, so now moving on to the. So, check. Then the repeat x-ray because uh, the baby was not improving on ventilator we did a repeat x-ray and you can see uh, the x-ray the opacity which was on the right side has changed to the left side so in and in between the uh, 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 blood culture came negative we also sent a bronchalveolar lavage culture which showed enterococcus so at this point the antibiotic was changed to ticoplanin according to the sensitivity uh, echocardiography was normal because there was so much of uh, changes we thought some cardiac anomaly may be there ultrasound as a routine was done was normal repeat back tech was also negative so now we thought okay maybe uh, we will keep the baby in left up position because it's a left side here started chest physiotherapy but there was no improvement in clinical status after 48 hours what are your thoughts so definitely we'll go for an another x-ray so after 48 hours we did an another x-ray and there was a change in the side of the opacity again to the see this was the second x-ray on the this was a left-sided opacity now it again on the right-sided so thoughts 
first of all we'll see the marker is correct or not if technical error is not then okay, that is from our institute yeah. and we are very confident so about it the <laughs> things that can uh, hinder the expectoration of secretion some congenital malformations can be there that is not all some mucus plugs that is causing the problem and the mechanism that is hampering the clearance of the secretions that can be the some congenital things like that that can have the problem like this so anyone wants to add something what you will do next then here, here we, we need to think that either either this organism is so much exudative and body by its own mechanism is not able to clear this exudate so virulent organism with exudative uh, in, inflammation or uh, we have problem of removing the secretion may it be mechanical may it be physiological or pathology so our humid our gases of ventilated gases are humidifier or not humidifier is working properly or not that first we have to check and if that all is correct, then we have to go into the pathological cause of uh, clearing the secretion and airway is there or not. So, Absolutely, very, the point is very well taken. That, some, there is some problem in clearing of the airway secretion. So, so, so bas it is, basically yeah. either the organism is virulent as Dr. Man, or there is a problem with the host. Yeah. So baby itself, immunodeficiency also there or yeah. problem with clearing secretion. So, uh, so the dictum is we... Uh, we make the students to learn whenever there is unusual behavior of an infection, uh, infection, unusual organism, unusual site, think of immunodeficiency. Basically, you are looking at infective and non-infective causes. Yes. If yes. infective is, is dealt with, then you are looking at non-infective, which includes your CT thorax, CT NGO. These are the support, this support where the problem is. Having said that, right click marker and the position of endotracheal tube. Mm. At times, it is then easily ignored, and then because of the mark position ET tube, you see find of collapse and concern on one side or other side. Absolutely, sir. And for uh, resistant or that aggressive organism, generally, what clinically we see is the progression of the infections towards the other side, but clearing on one side and uh, getting in other side is uh, technically we are seeing so that. So, it is basically thing it's like what happens in older children due to foreign body. It's moving here and there. And so actually uh, this baby was in, uh, intubated, ventilated. So we couldn't go for chest, chest uh, CT chest. And uh, the patient was affording. I know it's not possible. And actually, as I mentioned, proper history taking is very, very important. There was a second degree consanguinity. And one of the sibling was also affected by cardiac disease. So with all these points, uh, we thought of sending a whole exome sequence and because collapse was changing side according to the dependent side giving high suspicion of mucociliary clearance defect family history of cardiac disease and there was so there was a high suspicion of primary ciliary dyskinesia meanwhile we continue the treatment and this was the result which came in, which shows this this baby was homozygous for primary ciliary dyskinesia this was in the i think march or yeah march uh, so this baby is still now on follow up i had gone to picu twice is on, is on azithromycin prophylaxis still now leaving but with the prognosis has been explained so moving to our next case case 2 which is a term baby 2.9 kg on breastfeeding and top mixed feeding presented on day 21 with cough and cold and uh, for two days and respiratory distress for one day and there was fever and this was the x-ray with a count of 4350 with a crp of 73 others within normal limit iv fluid more oxygen antibiotics started and uh, baby deteriorated rapidly and this was the x-ray antibiotics was upgraded in this case there was a very rapid deterioration of this baby blood culture showed no growth but no clinical improvement so what are your thoughts also? basically if you look at some of the case the three week old baby coming from the community so something is the related community set infection if at all is infection first of all and uh, baby has some respiratory issues deteriorating deteriorating x-ray is also showing bilateral inflammatory parenchymal problems yes. so primary you are dealing with at this stage some sepsis now you are saying that antibiotics were given baby is not responded so i'll keep the non-bacterial causes in the mind and commonly depending on the season these are the viral infection which way which you don't know at this stage mm. but there is some viral infection setting in the baby and will we go with the routine management ventilation management nutrition infection control and all this thing to begin with okay. and as the baby progresses or the disease progresses, we need to catch where where the problem is and plan our investigation accordingly
So anything special you would like to ask in the history? Family history. Yeah. So it was November two. It, it it's last year. Okay, November two zero two two. And so there was a epidemic of viral infections going on. The siblings were affected. Will you send viral PCR in this baby? Certainly yes. These are the cases ah. where we will nasopharyngeal throw 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 for the PCRs. So where from where you will send? Uh, Child is already intubated, so better to send the lavash and uh, of course. Uh, so experience. once the child is intubated, don't send the nasopharyngeal, always send the so this was a respiratory PCR panel was RSB positive. J just one thing. Yeah. As you told the importance of history, is there because 20 to 23 day old, if there is no history of viral symptoms in family, family and then yes, we have to absolutely. think of cardiac as well for uh, as well. Absolutely. So that uh, third day where uh, that's yes. the time period. Yes, okay. yes. yes. Not clear of the uh, organ, is uh, rather than spending only viral panel, we should send the whole PCR panel like biofire or some ammonia panel so that we get the organ bacterial. Actually, it was respiratory PCR panel was the whole panel. Was okay, so it was uh, all all the things are there. So it came positive for RSV. I think even in this year we are getting RSV positive cases. So why I put this case? Do we have any role of ribavirin in RSV pneumonia in New York? It's ribavirin in neonates or in, in any RSV infection, then uh, we are in high risk group, like and or this kind of clinical condition where we, we are put to the back, very rapid deterioration, not responding. So, so, but there is no recommendation. Correct. So, very small studies are there, and that also in severe cases. Uh, they have given but routinely it is not recommended. So very clear cut message, no role of routine, are, even if the baby is sick, though sometimes we have to use, like we will come to that. What is the dose and duration? Do we get nebulized ribavirin here or oral? So okay. anyway, Dr. Vaibhav. It's oral forms are available, that is the 200 milligram of uh, this one per capsule and generally uh, ideal rec uh, recommendation is to give by oral regulation only. Absolutely. But when you are pushed against wall and don't have anything, as you said, then 10 to 15 mg per kg per day to divide it was uh, orally people. So have. oral solution is not available, but capsules are available. 200 mg, you can dissolve it and give the dose of 7.5 mg per kg per dose. So uh, coming to be 15 mg per. But uh, any other therapy is the available. strong message would be it, it should yes. not be used as a routine. <laughs> Many RSCs are happening in the community. Yes. Just because everyone's assessment of the severity is different. When we say severe, something which is severe to me may not be severe to him. And unnecessary we will start on rebivarin. So message would be that RSV treatment, rebarin is not routinely recommended only for selected group. That is to be prescribed. That's so, sir has told his experience, but the most important message is whether to stop antibiotic because we have to practice this antimicrobial stewardship. So, once once I'm sure, then I don't have to stop antibiotic in this case because this baby is deteriorating. Yes. So, my blood culture is negative, my biofire is all right, and I don't expect any bacterial causes, then I'll stop. So, yes. maybe 72 hours of antibiotic, then stop it. That's it. So, in this case also, the antibiotic was stopped. Uh, because basically we have given ribavirin to this case. This is the only neonate. See, this year also we got many RSV cases. Some of them landed in NICU. Uh, PICU people have used two this type this year, but we have not used. All of them has improved. So the clear cut message is don't use ribavirin unless you are absolutely pushed back and uh, you are sure uh, this baby might. So the role is doubted and there is no clear cut recommendation of using this. So this is the baby, baby who received ribavirin for seven days, extubated after five days and gradually went off and discharged. So now coming to a very in fact, common that, case. In fact, for that, that restricted, uh, the uh, small group where the uh, chances virus is very high, and it will cause life-threatening events for the baby. The right treatment would be monoclonal antibodies, yes. which is of course not available yes. in our country, Country. very costly. And also that is to be given before the season starts, prophylactically. Yes, but I just we all know that, that it is point. There. So what are the other modes of therapy? Because we are running late, we are moving to an, another common case, very common. These two were uncommon. 38 week old male baby born by LUCS came with on day 14 of life with swelling and reduced movement of right knee joint, accompanied by fever. 
for last three days, 102. And even so, neonates usually doesn't have fever. They were having 102 spikes for last three days. And even full birth history, there was no history of any injection. There was no history of past NICU admission. Total count was 20,600 with a CRP of 202. Blood culture saying imaging of the year was done, which I will show you. But I would like to know what is your initial choice of antibiotic and why? It has localized. The infection has localized. Baby is yes. not that much sick. Although CRP is 200, so gram positive is more likely and I will go for vancomycin to start. Okay, so, uh, so what do you think the cause? The bug is cephalo uh, yes, cephaloscopus. Cephalo so as, as rightly said, the in common cause of uh, septic arthritis in our country is cephalococcus. So would you like to start only with cephalococcus? Someone will defer? I will, I will add uh, aminoglycosid group also because presentation, though it's localized, but we don't know whether it's a delayed presentation of vertical transmission and though culture we have not yet in our head. So better to start with and uh, if uh, anyway, culture uh, pinpoint something, then we can definitely step down. But in this case, uh, better to start with two antibiotics because it's a deep infection and uh, sequelae may be uh, their lifelong. So uh, some of the units, they start, they have a protocol for also starting septic arthritis. They start with, because staphylococcus and gram-negative both can occur. So they start with a gram-negative cover and a vancomycin. So, but uh, uh, Dr. Ravi is absolutely right. If it is localized and you think, actually there was a swelling also in the upper part of the thigh, which I will show in the MRI. So you might start with a uh, staphylococcal, good staphylococcal cover. So, uh, but the baby on day of admission itself in the evening developed respiratory distress and meanwhile the chest x-ray come because we have we always done do the chest x-ray and it also showed some patches in the right side the focus was uh, done uh, to see uh, whether there is any fluid there was no fluid put to CPAP and antibiotic was continued and uh, and this is the MRI report sorry This is the MRI report. As you can see, in the upper part of thigh also, there was a redness also, a swelling, a little bit of swelling, not much. There was a collection of uh, abscess, uh, uh, abscess in the upper part of the uh, thigh also. And this was the joint. So uh, next, the MRI shows uh, there was septic arthritis of the knee joint and there was also an abscess. So aspiration of pus was done from upper part of thigh and sent for culture. And this were the culture, both from the pus and from the blood we got uh, MRSA so will you continue with antibiotics suppose you have started with both uh, suppose some se th third generation cephalosporin and uh, vancomycin will you stop the third generation cephalosporin certainly yes yes so so once you have got, uh, got the organism you should stop the other uh, uh, will you so a uh, vanco or tico there is always a controversy regarding that so if someone wants to highlight on that so tico planning uh, by literature has a better penetration in the bone and vanco has a better penetration in the lungs here both the bone and the lung is involved so what so dr ravi is clear we will give uh, vanco because a sick baby always we prefer vanco mrsa so preference will... is vanco vanco so anyone will differ another thing with, with this culture uh, it is not stated here but if you have a breakpoint and if you have the sensitivity yeah it, it is it is there the breakpoints are there the MICs are given. I'm sorry about the thing. Uh, so I think the TICO was 0. 0.5. Yes, TICO was 0. 0.5. Vanco was 1. So uh, the lowest your MIC is from breakpoint. Mm. So ideally, using that drug to have maximum effect. Plus, you have, while choosing the drug in such uh, infection, it will difference the static and bacterial data. And here, will be a vanco. Both Tico and Vanco both are cedar, so no point. But uh, Tico here has a lower MIC of 0.5. So, but uh, sometimes van with Vancomycin, we have some yeah. side effects. And practically, a, yeah, the yeah. administration will be easier with the Tecoplanin. Yes, Vanco will yes. require maybe some short long line sort of thing will be required. Exactly, Tecoplanin can be give, can be made with, made with the peripheral excess. So, maybe Tico or maybe also all right. And, but uh, MRSA Vanco. That's what I'll exactly. see the clinical course as well. Yes. See. So respiratory distress settled, repeat X-ray showed improvement. Actually, this baby is still now in our unit. So repeat count shows 21,500 with a CRP till uh, 100. Accepting feeds, gaining a little bit of weight, but when to discharge, 
or how long to give an IV antibody? This becomes a very important question in septic arthritis and osteomyelitis. So I would like to hear from my extreme panelist. Definitely three to four weeks of IV antibiotics, but overall six to seven weeks, six weeks will be okay. And then change to oral after I again the marker. So is it for septic arthritis or osteomyelitis? What you are talking of? Basically, six weeks is the septic arthritis. Yes. That is for sure. How many of you will give for six weeks? Number one. How many baby will stay in the NICU or in the room for the six weeks? Maybe not a single one. Uh, so, I'll look at the culture. Linazolid is the one which can be used. Yes, sir. So it that's for oral preparation. If it is going to work with Linazolid. So when you will switch over? When we switch over, we, when, when we can uh, counsel the parents that the baby can be get discharged, when we can switch over to oral. Uh, when the clinically improvement is, the RPS should be come down. Practically, that's... we are uh, at the end of three weeks, like till three weeks, we are continuously giving IV. And then with the two consecutive CRPs are negative, baby is clinically stable, no fever, no pain. Then... And getting it also. So actually, we also counseled like that. So we said still the markers are not, has not come down. We are continuing IV antibiotic. The baby is, I think today is the 16th day. So we have more or less told 21 days and maybe another three weeks of uh, oral. Osteomyelitis needs a longer course. Septic arthritis is four to six weeks. Osteomyelitis is six to eight weeks. And we switch over from IV to oral. If the uh, inflammatory markers come down, the baby improved, started uh, gaining weight and everything has to be considered. But follow-up is very important. It is, you have to remember, even in spite of treating those, they sometimes have some residual effects. Now, case four is a very interesting one. A term male baby presented with rash all over the body since birth. There was abdominal distension since second day of birth. The rash was present all over, muffin-like spots, non-itchy, non-painful, not associated with any drug intake of the mother. There was no significant maternal illness, no history of viral infection. What are these rashes and what may be the etiology? Dr. Vaibha, would you know who? These are uh, looking like uh, blueberry muffin rash. This is the site for extra medullary hematoposis generally because in, uh, in um, fetus in fifth month of gestation that uh, hematoposis takes place in skin also and that will be then phagocytosis and uh, the main site of intramedullary will take over. But when there is uh, like causes may be infectious as well as non-infectious causes are there. What practically we commonly rule out is initially the torch infection and if uh, everything we got negative then the second category of investigation for uh, like leukemia or some nucleosarcosis kind of thing or uh, uh, hematological disorder then we can think of uh, investigating that also. So the uh, counts as you can see it was 11,500 uh, with a CRP of 9.9 .9 and platelet was 15k. So you have blueberry muffin rash, low platelet, you have abdominal distension which we found out to be a hepatospinomegaly. So what you will think of torch infection. So these are the causes of blueberry muffin rash. So if you have an extra medullary hematopoiesis, you think of infection like rubella, toxoplasma, CMV, mainly rubella. Uh, the eye examination was normal or if you have anemia, uh, then you can think of these conditions. But don't forget to think of the neoplastic infiltrations, which may be leukemia, neuroblastoma. So neuroblastoma, we have gone, uh, we have got a previous case of neuroblastoma coming to blueberry muffin. Uh, so And of course, non-malignant conditions like histiocytosis. So uh, what we did, uh, developed conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, hepatospinomegaly. Uh, so SGOT, SGPT was little raised. And also you can see there was an altered uh, PTT and PT. Uh, not very high for APTT, but PT is 21.6. So at this point, the baby was transferred to our hospital. So how we will proceed? Anyone can say. What are the investigations? We have already <laughs> told mainly. Basically, you are looking at the routine issue only. But if you, yes. if you look at the etiology, obviously you are looking at the torch. PCR yes. for the rubella, toxoplasmosis, peri good peripheral smear examination. And if that is not conclusion, then more suffice investigation in form of skin biopsy will be required. So depending on the what you get on the initial set of investigation, you decide on the less, next line of the uh, investigations. So the rubella. The other sides of if, if you are thinking in terms of thought, then other sides of involvement like brain, kidney, eyes. Yeah. Eyes, absolutely. So we did an eye examination. Nothing was significant. Echocardiography was there, it, which was normal. Ultrasound showed hepatospinomegaly. Rubella IgMG IgG was negative. CMB IgG was high. 
but you, it can be high as you all know IgM was not detectable so we thought of repeating to see whether IgM was rising but unfortunately the baby received blood transfusion outside and also an IV gamma because the platelet was not coming down by the center so we couldn't do that uh, urine PCR CMV was it was done from outside was not detected blood culture showed no growth peripheral blood smear was unremarkable so uh, baby star uh, and the repeat counts shows the counts here shows a less uh, better uh, the conjugative jaundice was coming down with a better uh, SGOT SGPT level and PT was also getting better and baby started to accept feed orally jaundice started we thought of we planned of doing a bone marrow and skin biopsy as the things were coming down the part patient uh, the parents were very reluctant to do bone marrow and skin biopsy but uh, we uh, uh, counsel them at least you let us do the skin biopsy so uh, we did the skin biopsy and it was we can enlarge it it was showing histologic finding was shown a uh, non langerhans and histiocytosis and there was plenty of there was possibility of zubenine xanthogranuloma and we did this uh, immunohistochemistry which showed a 100 is negative so if a 100 and cd1a is negative it is not uh, histio so not longer and cell histiocytosis so this was suggestive of suvenine xanthogranuloma let's see so this is suvenine xanthogranuloma what you get here is a foamy uh, histiocyte these are the foamy histiocytes and often sometimes you get the giant cells so i have never seen this is the first time i'm seeing a suvenine xanthogranuloma have you seen any one of you is it seen in your net sorry not commonly basically this is a, a disease of childhood yeah. having said that i am not sure the numbers but about 10 to 15 percent cases the rashes are seen in newborn period yeah. so that means probability is something like 10 to 15 percent babies yeah. will see the yeah and the the problem is that most of them the moment you see blueberry mice you talk about torch torch, torch. torch, torch but it's exactly. not torch then this would be the thing thing yeah. that so uh, we also said urinary vma thinking of neuroblastoma and the ultrasound was not suggestive of any tumor so that was also ruled out so we went for skin biopsy and that clenched the diagnosis so you should have a very high suspicion last few minutes man yeah 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 so i will have just some practical dilemmas that we often get in nicu uh, uh scenarios one scenario a neonate with sepsis has improved on our first line antibiotic but antibiogram comes out with resistance pattern so do we need to change no, the antibiotic? No, 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 don't change don't, antibiotic. No, no. So everyone is agreeing. Scenario two. We change the staff who collect. <laughs> okay, okay. Good point. So scenario two. A neonate admitted and diagnosed with culture positive sepsis. We started the correct antibiotic as per sensitivity, correct dose also. But baby worsens in three days and went to a shock. May not be septic. <laughs> so it's better to say shock. So what may be the cause? Sorry. Any similar seeds, maybe marker dysfunction because of peripheral pulling of the blood, Absolutely. everything. So yeah. basically, again, the make sure about the ventilation, hemodynamics, and cut with the same antibiotic as long as baby is stable. So that's very important. Not only antibiotic for infection, you have to have a very good supportive care, and uh, it is very very important. To maintain temperature, maintain blood pressure, monitor sugar. Everything should be properly done. Then only the baby will not. But recover. here. Is the baby improving or not? Because in vivo and in vitro sensitivity, sensitivity also may differ. Yeah, yeah, that is, another point. yeah. That, that is another point. That is another intrinsic resistance of the organism. Like uh, Pseudomonas, they are resistant to for uh, second generation chlorosporin, canamycin. So that and intrinsic there are also terms pattern. like creeping MIC. So we are not going to that because then it will be a <laughs> antibiotic session only. So I'm just so there are so many points. Okay. So now moving to another common uh, scenario. A neonate was treated for negative bacteria meningitis with culture proven antibiotics for 21 days baby was discharged unfortunately baby came back after 10 days with hydrocephalus can we prevent it what is the role of repeat lumbar puncture i look at the csf at 21 days if the csf was normal ideally the meningitis is six weeks of the antibiotic ideally okay so priority priority would be to go will go for that but if the baby was fine safe as fine civil culture has come negative then yes three three weeks of antibiotic will suffice as far as hydrocephalus is concerned, you can't prevent it. Communicating means it's a problem with the absorption of the CSP in the meninges. And there's a the imbalance between production and the absorption. That's what the hydrocephalus. 
So, uh, sir, what is the message? We should repeat alamba puncture. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes, and yes, yes. and head ultrasound, head ultrasound, yes. serial head ultrasound will help. Absolutely. So, though we don't do in pediatrics, and sometimes the pediatrician who is practicing neonatology, they often miss to do a lumbar puncture at the discharge. So, this is very, very important. At least we could have then uh, documents of it was sterile or the uh, cell count has come down. So, a neonate is having persistent systemic fungal sepsis. This is quite often seen in our unit because we have so many referred cases. They find adequate antifungal treatment. So, how to proceed and when to repeat fungal blood culture? It's all that. So, if yeah, so someone. Source also, that if there any, any plastic or any source of continuous source of fungal section is there, that we have to remove it. Uh, inherently, we need to understand that fungus are slow to get cleared from the blood. If clinically better, then uh, we need to repeat the culture at least after seven days in fungal infection just to see the clearance. And thirdly, uh, what we routinely use in fungal infection is uh, Luconazole. It is fungus tetica. And uh, we need to give some time. Suppose you have given amphotericin because it was resistant to uh, Luconazole and you have given amphotericin. Then uh, then also it is not coming down. So, so how to proceed? To what are the things we should see and for? And know compromised state of the... Yes, of course. And we should look for... And administration technique and uh, that immunodeficiency, underlying immunodeficiency, source yes. control. Also, uh, some lines hidden or sources. Hidden so urinary infection, sources. urinary infection generally. Yeah. So, you have to look for kidney. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Madam, uh, generally, for, yeah, fungal balls in the kidney and everything. Fungal. What we have noticed in the literature tells is fluconazole is good for prevention, but once you have a fungal yes. sepsis, um, generally yes. amphotericin. But yes, candida yes. albicans and non albicans, that's yes. where the difference would be. So, all candidas cannot be treated with fluconazole. fluconazole. Non albicans will require amphotericin, amphotericin B. B. And you should search for the hidden sources like fungal ball in kidney or even in the heart sometimes. Look for the eyes. And when to repeat fungal blood culture is very important because the duration and of. At times, there's a bypassing. How do you administer all these antibiotics and the antifungals? There are set criteria to deliver those things. Absolutely. Not to keep in mind. That's mind the thing. Yes, sir. And uh, because uh, you have to, the duration of antifungal treatment depends upon a negative blood culture. So the day you have a negative blood culture, after that you should continue for 14 days. So with this, I would like my panelists to Thank give you. key messages and we will end the session. So uh, Thank you. Uh, one, one note of key message. <laughs> so both, both as I always see neonates, my baby is the prime. So if baby is sick, I would start antibiotics, but downgrade it if things are improving. And second thing, <clears throat> if baby is uh, well, then you just see that you don't give un unnecessarily antibiotics. Okay, okay. So, so Early sepsis, nothing can prove and nothing can disprove except blood culture. Okay, thank you sir. Very good clear cut message, yes. Okay, antibiotics too, cheap and... Causes and mechanical causes. Should like be ruled out. Technique, humidification, routine care. It has to be taken. So, absolutely wonderful. Thank you, my panelists. <laughs>